Does the United States knowingly create its own illegal immigration issue? A provocative question indeed, but one that needs to be asked. As we delve into the complex issue of illegal immigration, we must consider the possibility that U.S. sanctions on South American countries might be a contributing factor. Could it be that these sanctions are inadvertently producing the very issue they aim to solve? Dive into this tangled web with us as we explore the cause and effect relationship between U.S. sanctions and immigration. Sanctions, a tool used by the United States to express disapproval and exert pressure on nations. A sanction, in its simplest form, is a penalty levied on another country as a method of influencing their actions. It's a diplomatic tool, a way of saying, we don't agree with what you're doing, and we're going to make it harder for you to continue doing it. One region where the United States has historically used sanctions as a tool of foreign policy is South America. Since the mid-20th century, the U.S. has imposed sanctions on various South American countries for a myriad of reasons. From human rights abuses to drug trafficking, and from political corruption to attempts to destabilize U.S. interests. Let's take a brief journey through time. In the early 1960s, the U.S. imposed an embargo on Cuba in response to the Castro regime's nationalization of U.S. businesses without compensation. This embargo, which is still in place, has had far-reaching effects on the Cuban economy and its people. Fast forward to the 80s and 90s and we see the U.S. implementing sanctions against countries like Nicaragua and Colombia, primarily due to concerns over drug trafficking and political corruption. More recently, in the 21st century, the U.S. has imposed sanctions on Venezuela, primarily in response to alleged human rights abuses and political corruption under the leadership of Hugo Chavez and his successor Nicolas Maduro. These sanctions have been a point of contention, with critics arguing they exacerbate the country's economic crisis and hurt the very people they're meant to protect. These are just a few examples in a long history of U.S. sanctions in South America. Each instance shares a common thread, the U.S. leveraging its economic power to try and influence change in nations it deems are acting against its interests or values. But what happens when sanctions, meant to bring about change, result in unintended consequences? Let's delve into this question next, examining the potential link between U.S. sanctions and the immigration issue. Sanctions can cripple a nation's economy, and it's the everyday people who suffer the most. Let's imagine for a moment, a bustling market in a South American city. Now, imagine the same market with half the stalls empty, prices skyrocketing, and the sounds of bustling commerce replaced with hushed whispers of worry. That's the stark reality of a nation under sanctions. Sanctions, by their design, are meant to exert economic pressure on a country's leadership. Yet the impact is seldom confined to the echelons of power. It trickles down, seeping into the lives of the ordinary folks. People who once had steady jobs find themselves unemployed, small businesses that were thriving are forced to shut down, and families that were just getting by are pushed into poverty. In countries like Venezuela, for instance, sanctions have led to a scarcity of essential goods. Imagine walking miles to buy basic necessities like flour or milk, only to find the shelves barren or the prices beyond your reach. That's a day in the life of many Venezuelans presently. In other South American nations, sanctions have resulted in hyperinflation, where the value of the local currency plummets. Picture this. One day, you have enough savings for your kid's college education, and the next it's barely enough to buy a loaf of bread. That's the devastating reality of hyperinflation. And let's not forget about healthcare. In a sanctioned country, even life-saving medicines can become scarce, leaving the sick and the vulnerable at risk. Imagine a mother unable to find the medicine her child needs, or a hospital running out of essential supplies. These are not just hypothetical scenarios, they are the lived experiences of millions in South America whose lives have been upended by sanctions. It's a harsh reality, one that leaves people with little choice but to seek better opportunities elsewhere. As their home economies crumble, many are forced to look elsewhere for a better life. And so they set their sights on a land known for its promise of opportunity, the United States. As survival becomes a struggle, the United States, the land of opportunity becomes an appealing destination. When economic hardships become unbearable, what choice do people have? Imagine a parent unable to provide for their family, a young graduate unable to find work, a farmer unable to sell his produce, all because their country's economy is crippled by sanctions. Now imagine a beacon of hope, a place where they believe they can find work, provide for their families, and build a better life. 
This is the allure of the United States for many in South American countries. These sanctions, intended to pressure governments into changing their policies, often end up hurting the common people the most. As their local economies crumble, they're left with few options. Many choose to stay, hoping for a change that may never come, but for others, the promise of a better life in the United States is too strong to resist. It's important to understand that the decision to migrate is not made lightly. The journey to the United States is fraught with dangers. Immigrants often face harsh terrains, inclement weather, and the constant threat of being caught and deported. Yet despite these daunting risks, the surge in immigration continues. Why? Because for many, the perilous journey is worth the chance of a better life. However, it's not just the allure of opportunities that drives this migration, it's also the despair and hopelessness that sanctions can instill in people. The lack of economic stability and opportunities in their home countries often leaves them with no other choice but to seek refuge elsewhere. So, we have to ask ourselves a critical question. Are the sanctions imposed by the United States inadvertently creating an environment that fuels the very issue they're designed to curb? Are they contributing to the rise in illegal immigration by making life untenable in these South American countries? So, are U.S. sanctions inadvertently fueling the very issue they seek to curb? It's a complex issue, one that requires understanding and action. Our conversation today has shed some light on the intricacies of the immigration issue and how U.S. sanctions on South American countries inadvertently fuel the very crisis they aim to solve. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a vast ocean of information out there waiting to be explored, and it's crucial that we dive in headfirst. The more we learn, the more we realize that the current approach might not be the best one. It's time to ask ourselves, can we do better? Can we find a solution that doesn't require people to leave their homes and everything they know in search of a safer, more prosperous life? One possible solution is to shift the focus from punitive measures to supportive ones. Instead of crippling economies with sanctions, we could be investing in them, helping them to grow and flourish. Another alternative could be diplomacy and negotiation. Working with these countries to address the issues at hand, rather than imposing sanctions that often hurt the most vulnerable. The key here is to understand that there isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. Each country, each situation, requires a tailored approach. We need to foster a climate of understanding and empathy. We need to remember that behind every statistic, every policy, there are real people with real lives at stake. It's time to rethink our strategy, advocate for change, for a world where people don't have to leave their homes in search of a better life. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.